All right, so in this video, we're checking out the Diatone uh, GTB 4 inch toothpick. That's what they're calling this here Diatone toothpick. Label toothpick, kind of all over the place here, even on the arms. 4 inch toothpick. There's a 5 inch toothpick version as well, based on the same design here. Um, this is actually the Power Pick design from Bob Ruge. And uh, I know you guys are like, oh, it's been stolen or whatever, cloned, but this is actually a collaboration project between. Bob and Diatone, so this has this is totally legit and authorized. So if you guys are wondering, this is where the design came from. It's I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly from seeing the actual um, prototypes on on Facebook. This is almost exactly the same. I don't think they modified it in any way. I think they may have add some TPU parts or something like that. Just kind of cleaned it up a little bit, but it's for the most part the same. Now it comes uh, shipped. Obviously, it drops off in the box with this top canopy separated. So these four screws are separated. The camera and the VTX antenna are on little plugs that you have to plug into the plugs around the flight controller. And then the actually the UFL connector goes on the video transmitter. And then there's a little metal plate that goes over the UFL connector and two screws hold that down. And I actually stuck my receiver inside the canopy you can barely see it's right there it's an uh, rxsr receiver and i'm just using the standard um, cable that came with um, the diatome kits just plug it in so it's all plug and play didn't do any soldering at all and just it, it's a bit tight but it all fits in there no problem and i got the canopy on and it's basically a little bit of assembly required you have to just play, plug much stuff in and then get the canopy on here. And then you push the uh, uh, receiver antennas through these uh, holes in the TPU and then add these antenna tubes to protect the antennas. So for the rest of the frame here, you get the canopy, you got these two side plates. I have some standoffs that go sideways through here. And then you have this plate here that separates the canopy, holds the canopy together. And then you have these four M3 standoffs that hold the canopy to the main main frame here and then you can see here there's a 20 by 20 stacks this is the mamba mk3 stack uh it's an f405 um 20 by 20 flight controller and it has a i think this is a behali s esc i think it's a 30 amp uh 20 by 20 so this is their latest iteration of the mamba stack there's been several of them I think this is the third generation and then the they have a new video transmitter it's the uh, mamba tx400 so this one goes up to 400 milliwatts but you can see in this frame design, they have these uh, hold extra holes here that are sticking out that aren't being used They're in the back in the front as well underneath this plug and then over on the side. And that's for mounting a, like a, a whoop style flight controller. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to fit in here. I think maybe it's going to get past the standoffs here. So if you, have, if you don't want to use this stack or if you buy the frame separately, then I think a whoop flight controller will fit in here as well. And then um, the bottom here is, um, I think these are one and a half millimeter plates for the sandwich and then three millimeter arms. And then you have some, I think that these are like some press fit nuts here and then an M3 screw that goes all the way through. You can see here to the standoff. So it's a, it's a nice design. It's very sturdy. Um, there's no flux in the frame that uh, I could detect and nothing in terms of flight characteristics, it's, it's going to hold up pretty well. We even had a few crashes. Not sure if it's going to come on the camera. You can see the, some scuff marks here from landing on concrete and stuff. But these little, um, I guess, carbon pieces will hold up to a lot of abuse and they do protect the motor. And the motor here is a 1404. This is a new motor, I believe, 3650 kV with the T style mounting. And then using the Gem Van 4023 prop here, obviously with the adapter for the T style two screws. And here in the back, you got this capacitor and the XT30 directly soldered to the ESC, but it's not secured anywhere. So, you know, like always, if this gets tugged really hard in the battery ejection, it may cause some problems with the. Uh, ESC pads being ripped off, but yeah, there's no strain relief there. So just keep that in mind. That's pretty common with a lot of these uh, bind and flies. 
And then you have the battery strap. I have it going this way. I believe you could possibly, no, you can't go the other way either. So it looks like the arms get in the way. So it looks like there's, there's these two slots here and I have the strap coming up through this way first through the back and then over and then back to this way and then out in the front and then uh, ends up over here. So I'm using uh, 3S 1100 milliamp hour GMB. This is a low C, like 50 C battery. Um, they recommend 850 to 1050 3S for the tune. And uh, for this battery, I think it's right on the edge of the tune. So it's a little, a little loose on the tune. I'm not exactly sure why they went 3S here because 3650 KV and 4S on this four inch prop ought to be okay. I didn't test it. I didn't do any like um, current testing or anything like that. See how much, how much draw, amp, amp draw I will have on a forest battery. I just went with the, um, basically whatever they recommended on the website. So I don't have an 853S. I think an 853S will probably fly the best uh, based on the way it flew for me on this battery, but you're gonna get a really long flight time on this battery. I mean, they're saying on a 1050, like up to 18 minutes. I think it's kind of like basically cruising around and just not doing any kind of acro at all. So if you're looking for maximum flight time, then maybe this battery might be for you. It flies totally fine cruising around, but if you're gonna do some more hard acro racing type flying, I would suggest going to the uh, lighter 3S850, but I don't have anything that size, so I didn't actually test any, test this with um, a smaller battery. Okay, so here's how much it weighs, no battery, 131.6, and then weight together with the battery I used, it's coming in 197.3, so yeah, four inch, um, basically toothpick style, um, ultralight micro, well under 250 grams with a pretty big battery. So I totally forgot to mention the camera that's in here is the Cadex Baby Rattel. It's a fine camera. Uh, I like this camera a lot. It's good field of view, good image, etc. You can change the settings as well uh, via this little um, plug in the back here, but they didn't include the OSD joystick. So I have a ton of those lying around. I'm sure some of you guys have had Cadex cameras. will have those, but um, if you never had a Cadex camera, then you're gonna have trouble changing the settings without acquiring one of those. So just keep that in mind. It's possible that maybe my um, sample just had it missing. That happens sometimes. But yeah, they, you have the ability to change your camera settings, but uh, without that joystick controller cable or controller board, you can't change the settings. So just keep that in mind. So as I mentioned before, this does come in a five inch version. It's basically the same frame, I believe, uh, just different arms, you know, obviously bigger or longer for five inch props. And it comes with these motors instead. These are the Mamba 2450 KV. I think these are 2204. And then they're using the five millimeter shaft for like standard props. So I'm actually gonna be using this not on a five inch version of this, but like a lightweight TGI um, sort of a, a long range flyer. So this is, pretty, this is a pretty light motor. So if you're interested in seeing some content on this motor, I'll have that coming up. It's gonna be like a, I don't know if you're, well, I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna call that video. It's gonna be a light DJI build or something like that. So if you're wondering where this motor is gonna go, that's probably gonna go into that. And uh, yeah, but this, I think I posted this on my Instagram like a month ago, but I haven't gotten around to that build. So if you're looking for content on five inch and what this motor is gonna be like, uh, that'll be in a future video. So basically in a nutshell, you know, at bottom line, it flies just fine. Obviously this is like a heavier version of the three inch toothpick, um, basically with a lot more power. So as you go from the bigger, basically the three inch prop to the four inch prop, and then go from the four inch prop to the five inch prop, your uh, power goes up quite a bit. Also your efficiency goes up as well. So you're gonna get more flight time for the amount of weight that you're carrying around. So these aren't that, that heavy. These bigger batteries are gonna give you much, much longer flight time. So you're probably seeing that trend with a lot of the more recent models and the motors that they're putting on here. Um, I think the Explorer LR from Flywheel also, I think had 1404 motors, but a lower KV and, and that ran four. I was like, that was a 2750 KV motor. 
and some people were getting like 30 minute flight times on a giant like 4S with uh, like 18650 18, cells lithium iron packs. So, you know, that is the kind of the trend now is getting lighter with more efficient motors and more efficient prop setups and getting like really long flight times. So I think maybe, you know, if you, go, look, if you want to go for like more acro and more power, more like racing, you might want to just consider going to the three inch toothpick because um, this, this is definitely going to beat the three inch in terms of like straight line flying and everything like that because it's, overall everything's bigger. It's just that it's not as nimble. So as you get smaller, you get more nimble, you're going to be able to fly in smaller spaces and make tighter turns. So if you're like flying in the backyard, for example, you're going to probably want to go with something smaller than this because you're going to be able to turn quicker and, you know, make faster maneuvers if that's the kind of flying you're looking for. Whereas something like this is going to be faster, probably in straightaways, um, definitely uh, more punch out in terms of power. Like if you want to do like acro flying over trees, that kind of thing over the three inch, but you know, basically has to do how much, the amount of space you got to fly. So if you got less space, you probably want to go smaller. If you have more space and, you know, more open area you want to, to get through quickly, then, you know, definitely go bigger and maybe even go to the five inch if you want, if you want to really fly around really fast in a really big area. So those are my, my suggestions on what size to get in this type of class. Anyway, so here's the flight footage. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Pretty quiet. Hardly making any noise at all. Oh, there's a bird. I think there's a bird here. The bird doesn't like me. Seems a little loose on 3S. Probably got too much power. This thing is probably gonna be a beast on 4S, I'm not sure. The electronics can handle it though. No weird oscillations. I'm getting a lot of video noise. Let's see. Yeah, there's a uh, increased throttle, there's a little bit more video noise, so. These the ESCs on the stack are letting a fair amount of video noise through. Now, the tune is a little bit loose. Could be better for a lighter battery. This is on the heavier side. 3S uh, 1100 milliamp hour. And hey, this is a low discharge battery, so it's not really meant for racing, but more for like kind of longer flights. So let's see here. I'm not gonna go too long with this one. They're saying like 18 minutes on a battery this size, which is kind of ridiculous. Let's probably take it down to maybe storage voltage. Let's see, 3.8 times three. It's actually already kind of near storage voltage already. Well, that's like about 11.4, I think. This is a low C battery though, so let's see how long it can stay here. At least, let's try and get a five minute flight in, four or five minutes in. So that's about three minutes so far. There's no doubt this can do tricks. And with the right tune, they should be able to do any kind of racing, really. But racing isn't my thing. It is 
flying pretty nice. The tune is definitely on a little bit on the loose side. It could be tightened up a little bit. This can definitely go way faster than this. I just not a racer. Don't have those kind of skills. I'm gonna hit the plant or something in that bush. This is flying nice. I'm only at 11 volts, four minutes. minutes. The wind's starting to pick up a little bit. You can kind of see it bouncing around a little bit. you guys think. There's a huge helicopter over there. I don't know what that is. I'm back up to 11 volts. Um, let's see here. to another punch out. Runner over there. Uh, bicyclist. Uh, I'm going to bring it in. Over five and a half minutes, pretty crazy.